welcome to your paint box. This month I have a guest artist again and a student and friend who's been painting with me for quite a while. And this is Millicent, or we call her Millie. And um, I always ask, first question I forgot to prepare you, but about how long have you been painting with me here? Or I have been painting almost nine, nine and a half years with, with all with you. I have taken some workshops here and there, but I love it. It has been my true calling and my true passion. She fell in love pretty much from the first day, which yes. is about the way most of us feel about oil painting. Um, I've told you all before, I started at 14 and a half years old, I think, and um, I was just hooked. I, I think really after my first class. So um, Millicent's here to do this squirrel painting for the month. And as you can see, we have a little array of squirrels on the table because there's kind of a running joke in the studio about, uh, I think it's from the movie Up, when the little golden retriever dog or yellow lab gets distracted by squirrels all the time, like any shiny object or squirrel that goes by. And we make fun of ourselves here. Mm -hmm. And I think Millicent has... I took, I took two out of my husband's office because he gets, he's, gets distracted very easily too. So we have... Um, we have Laura and we have Tom with us. And how did those names come about? They're just, they're just, just names that have been selected. Of people they've been selected over, over okay. the years okay. and... Well, and then we do a Christmas gift exchange. Well, what do we call it where we all steal from each other? And anyway, one year the Thursday class had a squirrel in the mix and everybody was trying to be after the squirrel for their gift. But it landed here in the studio where it needed to stay. And uh, then this was a gift from another student and that's where I keep my business cards and our little doorstep. So anyway, that's just a little bit about our squirrel theme. So when I decided to paint a squirrel for the no uh, October project, Nelson jumped right in and said she wanted to since yes. she and her husband have a running squirrel job. Yes. And we might tell some other squirrel stories throughout the project, but we're going to get started here. And Millicent and I will meet you back here for intermission. But in the meantime, let's uh, get ready to start step one. Okay, Millicent, are you ready to start? I am so excited. Good. I know you were excited about this project. Yes, I really was. We actually had someone else volunteer first, and then... I was sad. She was... Millicent was sad. She, didn't, she was very nice about it. But when the other person said that she might not be able to do it this time, Millicent quickly vol yes. volunteered. Okay. So, M Millie, I do say that we start a little differently in these with these projects. So it might be a little different and kind of fun for you. It's like it's, it's, I think it's more like getting a little private lesson. Um, so with this water-based paint, we're gonna take our brush and just dip it in that water, loosen it up a little bit. And then I come over here to the yellow ochre and just making a little thinned out pile. So what we're gonna do, just for drawing skills, for drawing help, I tell everybody to mark a dot at the center point on each side of the canvas and those are going to be little guidelines for us. And so for the beginning of the drawing, I want you to mark the top of his tail. So that's about one inch down from that center dot. And I pause the video at the end of each step if you need to catch up with anybody at home or Millicent here. Now I'm going to see this side of his tail. It's about an inch and a quarter, inch and a half. It's not it's from that center dot. So I'm just gonna mark the outside parameters of this cute squirrel. Right above the center dot here is the bottom of the foot, about one inch up. And then it looks like this space, it looks like this space right here is about almost two inches over to his side. So there's his shoulder. So let's take the brush and kind of make a big circle up here as his tail is just kind of a big bushy circle. Okay. And then on this side, it comes in a little bit and then back out to a big, all the way down towards that dot where we made the foot. So see the top is like a big circle and then his back side's kind of a big circle.
And then right in, if you put your brush right in the middle, middle of the canvas, you can come down, draw a big circle, semicircle for his back. And then we're going to have a little circle for his head. Oops. And then I'm going to finish the circle for his, it's kind of oval for his body. So we're going to start with those simple shapes. There's kind of a little oval circle for his head, an oval, oval, oval circle. You get that? ovally shape for his head <laughs> oval for the body and then I, it's kind of like a in that big oval of his tail we put a little notch in there and then let's take a look do we need to maybe draw the little ears on there just to add two little ears oh those little cute little hands and then just kind of two little blobs for feet i'm going to go ahead and draw this little Maybe he's sitting on a little fence. And, you know, I'm gonna draw some eyes in there. We'll come back in, as you know, Millicent, we'll, we'll get it later with paint more specifically. And then his two little hands meeting together here in the middle. And I'm gonna put a line in just parallel to this other little, where the white and the white of the stomach and it starts turning gray right there and under the neck. And that is really it. It looks like a little cartoon drawing, but that's how we start, just something simple. And this is where I'll say we're gonna stop our video here and let you all at home catch up. And then we'll meet you back here for step two. Okay, we're gonna do the background first. We're just gonna get that out of the way. Um, I like to do the background first just because you don't wanna spend a lot of time on it and it's not as important as your focal point, which is the squirrel. So um, I know sometimes artists do it in reverse and they paint their focal point and then just sprinkle a little background in because it's not as important. Um, I just kind of like to get that background out of the way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make three shades of green. And, and I say quite often, the shade of green that they have that comes with this Murray's water soluble set is a little bit too bright for a lot of our nature outdoor greens. And so we're going to make a green the old fashioned way. We're going to make it using yellow and blue. So I want you to pick up these, these uh, palette knives are really like a little spatula. So you wanna get used to just using the bouncy end of that spatula, I mean, palette knife. Pick up a little of the ultramarine blue, and then pick up a pretty good chunk of that yellow. The blue goes a long way. Yeah, I'm learning that. Yeah, and every time I do it with these paints, I feel like sometimes these, uh, that blue in this Marie's box is pretty darn dark. You know what, mine's so dark, I'm gonna split it in half. Since we're gonna make three piles, I'm just going to leave two piles there. And Millicent, if you wouldn't mind, since that paint's a little closer to you, would you yes. mind getting some more of that yellow? I, I think it's the that. lemon yellow. And so that's the lightest pile is going to be mostly lemon yellow with a little bit of that blue. And I might even add a little tiny bit of white so that we're going to have a You'll, you'll notice the, through the exercises, I usually have, let's make a light, a medium, and a dark of each color. Thank you very much. Usually Liel is here to do that for ah. us. So, appreciate that. Absolutely. So, Millie's, like we said, been painting with us a long time, and this is definitely gonna be one of her projects here. She needed to do the squirrel. I'm it's, so excited. Now, see how this lighter, it's mostly yellow, a smidge of white. So you just added just a touch. Just a touch of the blue. Okay. And I even added a little, a little white just to kind of make it kind of a soft color. And that's what we put in right here in the center. And so the medium color, I still don't need much blue in there. It really went a long way.
All right, that's my medium. And then the dark, we don't need much dark. I, mean, I just had it kind of sprinkled in the corners down here a little bit. So you'll hear me say a lot in, you know, painting on a two-dimensional surface, the way we get depth and dimension is to have kind of a light, a medium, and a dark, pretty much in each area. Um, so I'm going to wet my brush just a little bit so it loosens up, pick up that dark. I'm just gonna go ahead, put it on the end of my brush and just start sweeping that dark. I tend to use a little bit of a crisscross stroke to see if we can't cover up. And sometimes if there's too much water on, on, the, on your brush, it's a little harder to get that paint to spread, so. I'm just using kind of crisscross strokes and I'm gonna just gradually transition into that medium color. And I'm using the flat side of my brush. So we have to remember to use the whole flat side of the brush. I think I've just learned that I need to make sure my brush is a little drier. Yeah, sometimes, and sometimes some of these paints as, as we will all learn through the lessons, we talk more about how an, a paint can be opaque or transparent. And if it's a more transparent paint and you've got the water on there, it just becomes almost where it's not giving you any coverage. Is that what you're finding over there? I, I, I was, and that was mm -hmm. almost like a- See-through. Undercoat. Yeah. <laughs> like a little bit of a wash. Yes. And you see how we skipped that wash step here. I'm just going right into a direct painting. Um, when we work in the studio, a lot of times I'll have everybody do kind of a, a first layer that we call the wash. And in my longer lessons that I'm starting to videotape, we might go through the whole wash step. But in these lessons, I'm, I'm encouraging everybody to just directly paint right onto that canvas. I was gonna make, I think I am going to make just a little more of that darker version. That's a little short of what I wanted there. So you said you stole those two ceramic squirrels from your husband's oh, office. Did yeah. the decorator bring those and put those in? Oh, oh goodness, no. Um, Santa Claus oh. brought those to him one Christmas oh. um, because he was mentioning that people were talking about he loses his attention sometimes because <laughs> he has so much going on. And then somehow Santa brought those little things and put those um, yep. to us. Oh, so they live at the office. They live at the oh. office. But I had to share those since I got to come in mm -hmm. and Good. do a little filming. Mm -hmm. Good. We have, I'm going to make a little more of, well, yeah, I'm going to make a little more of the light and the medium. So again, I'm just doing the yellow and the blue. Um, we have another student who's painted here with us for quite a while, and she's a neighbor of mine. And she actually feeds a little squirrel. So that might be one of my first inserts into this video is a picture of Diane feeding her squirrel. Yes, is it Skippy? Or is <laughs> she's, it Chippy? Na she's named him Skippy. And Skippy. then there's Chippy who's come along. She's now feeding, I think, maybe two. But I think if it was Skippy that was first, he's, he's gained a few a few LBs. I think it probably wouldn't yeah. be a whole LB. It might be a few ounces. Yeah, a few ounces, yeah. <laughs> But lucky squirrel, smart squirrel. He knows where to get the mm -hmm. best food. And I find it interesting that she says he comes about the same time every mm -hmm. day. He knows when dinner time is. And of course, nowadays on YouTube and Instagram and all that, you see all these adorable videos of people with their pet squirrels. And I guess they realize that we're probably pretty safe to be around for the most part. <laughs> and I'm just crisscrossing, you know, I'm kind of using a crisscross stroke just to give it some interest. We don't want 
like I said, we don't want the background to overtake the whole painting, but we don't want it to be boring either. So just crisscrossing. Of course, Millicent has a black lab who I'm sure gets distracted by squirrels. Yes, that's one of his favorite things to chase when we're out on a walk. So I have to make sure to keep good Oops. hold on the leash. Mm -hmm. And of course my puppy Gracie is just discovering the whole squirrel thing. Very intrigued with that. Well, I don't know what I just made there. It was a little bit of a mess. So to not get the, uh, I need to get it more opaque. I need to add more paint, mm -hmm. blend more paint each time, mm -hmm. okay. Okay, I'm making up a little more. I guess when you're covering that eight by 10 canvas and a lot of background, I guess it just needs a lot more paint. It is very smooth. It goes on the canvas very mm -hmm. nicely. Mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, this, like I keep saying, uh, this generation of water-soluble oils, and I think they're going to continue to improve them when they first came out with them a few years ago, not a few years ago, probably 10 or more years ago. I didn't, I didn't love them. And then I'd, I'd read over the years that they had been making some progress with changing the ability for water to permeate the oil paint. Um, more. <laughs> I think this little squirrel painting is so cute. It's very fun. It makes and me smile. I used to have time to get out and do a lot of photography and probably have photographed a lot of squirrels and it's hard because they move so fast. Uh, but I did find this again on the royalty free website where I can um, pay a couple of dollars, have use another photographer's painting, uh, photograph, and I can paint for it from it without copyright worries. I'm closing in on it. You are too over there, aren't you? Yeah, I'm closing, yeah. So we had our Thursday morning class this morning and lively as usual, but it, and actually it was pretty full. Mm -hmm. Very full. Not as lively as it can be, but we have the holiday season coming up, so we'll get. Tis the season. We will have some, can't believe I'm saying that, but we will have some lively little gatherings in there. The Thursday group's good about celebrating birthdays and, and uh, getting together socially a little bit, just because we've all become so comfortable with each other in class. Well, the background is not quite done because next I'm going to do this little fence that he's sitting on, or picnic table, or whatever. He's a little kind of distressed, bleached wood. So, okay, so we're going to make that gray by picking up a little bit of this burnt umber, just a speck, just the tip of your palette knife, and then a little bit of the blue, ultramarine blue, the dark navy blue. I keep kicking the camera today. <laughs> um, pick up a little white, mix those together until you've got a, let's make maybe two shades of gray. This one's a little brownish, and then I'm gonna make one. Just a speck of ultramarine, just a speck of burnt umber. Put a little white in there, and then, so this is gonna be a little bluer. It's gonna, not, <clears throat> kind of nice to have two, two shades here. And again, I don't think I made enough. I'm making tiny yeah. piles today. I don't know why I'm being so conservative with my paint. But I went ahead and mixed up a third color. So it's this kind of a light brown. And then for this, instead of those kind of crisscross hatching strokes that I was using above, I'm actually going to just go with long horizontal strokes to kind of start the feeling of that wood grain.
and now I'm switching to another color. You can just kind of alternate and it, even if you just keep alternating those gray, the shades of gray that you made and pulling them in long horizontal strokes, they will tend to start looking almost like a wood grain. You can wiggle it a little bit so that if I give a little wiggle, it might look like wood grain also. Just going up under his feet a little bit and I'm closing in on being done. And I didn't mention, um, so often new students will ask me how, what happens if this gray mixes with the green? Will I get mud? And the answer is probably yes. So when I lay it down, I use the nice chisel under these brushes and just kind of get as close to that green as I can. And I sometimes just leave a little gap space and that gap space will either not be noticeable later or will come back at the very end and maybe just sort of tap in and fill in the gaps between colors. So like I say, even though I sometimes paint pretty fast, I go slow when I get those two colors next to each other. And um, I think we will take a break here and let you all catch up if you need to, and we will meet you back here at step three. All right, here we go, Millie. Time for the squirrel. You've been waiting. I've been waiting for this. <laughs> Very exciting. Okay, well, I'm going to start with this middle section of his tail with the warm, warm brown colors. Let's say I'm going to mix three warm browns, and I'm going to say the light shade, a medium golden brown, and a darker shade. So I'm thinking that I might take yellow ochre, a little tiny bit of yellow ochre, and umber, just a little bit of umber. But with that yellow ochre, I think you'll get a kind of a warm shade. That's really kind of nice. If I add a little more umber into that, umber and yellow ochre can give us this kind of darker warm shade down here. That is a pretty color. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a golden brown. And then the next shade, let's do the same too, but we'll add maybe a little less umber and maybe a little white. Yeah. yeah, so it's mostly yellow ochre, a dash of umber, and a little white to lighten that up a little bit. That might be too gold. I think it's too gold. More umber and more white. It is kind of trial and error as you do this. Mm -hmm. You know, like I say to people, I've been painting 45 years, which I know it's hard to believe because I started when I was one. <laughs> uh, I started when I was 14, so it gives away my age there. But there we go. Okay, since you follow that, I did put a little more umber and then a bit more white. Yes, you've got a nice shade there, Molly. All right, so the lightest shade, let's start with white. When I'm making a what we call a tint, which is just a shade off of white, start with the white rather than adding the white into a color. Let's, it's, if a color is mostly white, let's start with white and add into it. And I might just add some ochre. There, that's kind of pretty, real pretty. But you know what? It's a little too yellow. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little umber. And I don't know about yours, but mine's looking pinky. So I'm going to combat that and gray it out by adding, since I added a little umber, I'm gonna add a little tiny bit of ultramarine. Just kind of gray that out a little bit. And that's just this lightest, where the sun's hitting the top of the tail. Mm -hmm. Let's see if that looks good. Okay. 
Okay, so I love this tail on this thing. Um, so we have this, the warm shades of brown. I think we'll go ahead and make, maybe let's just start with two shades of gray. Um, right here where the tail meets the body. Was there a squirrel outside? Oh, <laughs> no, you're exactly right. I was just sitting here just like, oh, what's going on here? Allison started looking out the window. So, hence the squirrel. Because it's somebody squirrel. walked by with a very cute dog. Yeah. Cute. <laughs> um, I'm going to start with the, I'm going to make this gray right here where it's up against his back. Let's get that ready. Let's go ahead and get that done. That's going to be ultramarine blue and some of the burnt umber brown. Let's mix those two together to make a soft black. That looks just like that, looks good. Same formula, a little ultramarine blue, a little umber, and this time just a tiny hint of white to kind of lighten that up as a gray. That's pretty. That dog's following him around without a leash. Uh, I don't know if it's a, a, so. some kind of delivery man. He's got his dog at work with him. And yeah. nice. Okay. So, since we made those grays, um, let's go ahead and start with that. Right along that darkest gray, right along his back. Back. Where the tail meets the back, I should say. And again, now, the stroke I'm using here is more of a little tapping stroke. Just kind of tapping, it gives a little fur texture. And we'll work on more fur texture later. The shop, the uh, office center is busy here today. Did you notice that? Since, you know, COVID, it got so quiet around here. And now we're back to having a lot of activity. It's nice to see. And since I have some of this darkest black on the, um, brush, I'm just going to put a few of them along the edge of that tail. Maybe I'll just dip right into the, that medium gray. Just a few. We'll come back to the edge of that tail. Just around the edge there were some lighter grays. Okay. So I just kind of put that accent gray color in and now I'm going to go back to those warm browns that we made. I'm going to start with that darker brown, that kind of golden dark brown. And just I'm going to add some white to that. I think it's looking a little gold. There we go. I have noticed in my yard, you know, squirrels are different all over the country. Um, here they're mostly gray with a white belly, um, and in some parts of the country, they're more black with brown and more of a yellow belly. And I noticed one of those in my yard the other morning. Really? Mm-hmm. Now, I've never noticed those mm -hmm. kinds of ones. And then we were on a trip to North Carolina where they actually have not albino squirrels, but they are truly white squirrels. And, um, oh gosh, and we were, uh, in North Carolina and also in North Carolina, the um, squirrels were, were really very black stripe almost down their back and then um, up to the top of their ears they had these little black furry tips of their ears. Now Kathy, that's a raccoon. <laughs> well let me see if I can dig up a picture. No. I did take some pictures. That's crazy. Um, yeah. that's for, for, I've forgotten that there's just so many different types. Now, I have seen a white squirrel. This one was in Oxford, Ohio. Oh, really? But um, growing really? up in North Carolina, I had never seen a white squirrel. They were, um, okay, there's a college. We, were, we went to um, the Highlands, and there's a college there, and their mascot is the little white squirrel because if you, everyone wants to go to their campus because you can see a ton of these white squirrels running around. Because Lee's McRae, I'm just thinking, Lee's McRae College is in Banner Elk. Not, okay, um, I know Banner Elk and I love it. I've been there. Mm -hmm. Very. It's, it's kind of, that area is close to where I Okay, live, so. all right. So I'm still working in that medium brown, just kind of starting to introduce it on top of that gray that we put in.
and I'm still using just a short brush stroke. So occasionally here, I'm picking up a little gray and a little brown, just kind of make that not too bright. And again, if you see here closely, I've left a gap, complete gap between the green and the gray so that they're not mushing into each other here. Let me go into the, oh, see, even my lighter gold, it just when I get it on the canvas here, it's too, too gold and too light. There we go. This is the time of year where we have I don't know if it's called a hedge apple tree. I'm not sure what it is, but it's something that they look like rough, rubbery tennis balls, kind of rough. Is that the Osage orange? Wow, I don't know. I'll have to have you come look at my tree in the backyard and you tell me. But we find those little thing, those little oranges or apples or whatever they are <laughs> hidden everywhere. There's one in my mail basket. There's one in the flower pot. Oh, Gracie. There was one, well, no, the squirrels are, are oh. putting them in there. They're hiding, like that's where they're burying them for oh. winter, but they're not very good at burying, so they're just kind of hiding them. <laughs> and I found one hidden in my windshield the other day, down in my windshield. They're they're funny. And it, it couldn't have, I mean, the tree's in the backyard and the car's in the front yard, so right. it, it, didn't, it didn't fall in there. Um, and it, the funny one was in my mail basket <laughs> on the front porch. Really? They're not as bad as a tree I used to have that used to drop prickly ones. Oh, the prickly. Those are a rare type of elm, I believe. I thought they were chestnuts. What chestnut is what it is. It's a rare type of chestnut because I had a very lovely lady here in Lowell who was known for her gardening and arbor, arborist expertise come look at it. And yes, it was a certain type of female chestnut. And you have to have a male chestnut somewhere within X number of where it can be pollinated. Okay. Interesting. And um, there aren't very many of them left. It's a, she said it was a very, very old native Kentucky tree. And I know that there's one around the corner from me because when I walk the dogs, we have to really watch out for those prickly. They hurt? I would imagine they would um, hurt. When we had them things. in my old house, yeah. it would penetrate the bottom of a tennis shoe. I, I, well, you could step on it by mistake with a tennis shoe and the needles would go through. So it was something I don't want my dogs walking no. around. Not Gracie a go-go. No, not my little Gracie girl. I put a picture of Gracie in early on when we got her back in, I don't even know what, February or something. So it's time for me to post a picture again for everybody to see how big she's gotten. And we called her Pogo Pony for a while because I don't think she ever had four feet on the ground. She was, we couldn't keep her from jumping up. And uh, she's getting better at that. She's forever earned her name of Pogo Pony. So I'm adding the, I put in kind of my three brown shades and now I'm kind of sprinkling some of these gray shades on top. And I'm also gonna start getting a little closer here to where the tail is gonna come out over the green. I'm gonna start getting a little closer. And then we're gonna add those pretty whites. But right now I'm gonna go ahead and do the squirrels back, which is the light gray. I might need to make some more of that light gray. So gray is just a light version of black, and black is your two darkest colors mixed together. So umber and ultramarine blue. Now there is a black that comes in the kit, but they, that, like I told my class today, that usually doesn't make a very pretty black. And sometimes it can kind of ruin a painting when you've got just an ugly, dark, 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 uh, neutral black. So like, you know, these, these blacks that we've made here, this is a kind of a blue gray shade, and that's pretty. So I'm taking that light gray that I just made and going to just brush that all the way down his back. So the sun is obviously coming from this um, left side and hitting that tail and back and lighting up. That's where our light is starting. I think I <laughs> 
always notice a drawing issue. I had his head not nearly as low and hunkered down. I think I'm gonna go ahead and move it down. I kind of think it's so cute. I have it over too far and up too far. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna move it down. Take it out here. There we go. Nice thing about oils, right? Haven't we learned that a million times? In we here? have, and that's one thing I like about it. It's just, yeah. you, know, you can there we go. change things. Put his head down here. Much better. Just a quick little break. I'm gonna draw that ear back in. <laughs> was that the UPS guy with the dog? No, it was. Uh, Whole Foods delivering paper towels, a case, two oh. cases of water, oh. and I guess whatever grocery items they needed. Well, I'm going to start doing that <laughs> because I have paper towels and things for the studio on automatic delivery um, or recurring delivery, but I have it delivered home and then bring it here. Well, I probably need to continue doing that because I'm not. I have the business at home and the business here. I never know where I'm going to be. Well, and I need just to bring in some water because it's been certainly very, very nice to have water in here. Yeah. And, I've, and I have... That's fine. That's I have it here for you all. That's, you know, but it's it's nice there. to have it, but I need to do my share of bringing in the water. <laughs> like I said, it's busy around here today. All right. I'm starting to do the face. I'm just doing a little gray down the center of his nose. Um, I might jump into his front of his belly here. And I'm just going to go right into the white. My brush is a little dirty, so it's pulling in a little bit of brown and gray as I go. And then if you see here in the white, just like in the black, Usually, you know, the black and gray that I made is tinted kind of blue, and I tinted it a little bit with the with the cerulean blue because it's reflecting the sky. So if you see these white, these light blue that I put in his white fur, that's just a reflection of the sky. And you can actually go to some photos of animals outdoors and you'll see, even in blacks or in whites, you'll see some, some sky blue reflections. Um, it kind of in the, in the glossiness of their fur. So I'm going to take a little white and add just a tiny, tiny speck of that cerulean blue. I might even nip a little bit of that gray, mix it in there so it's softer. I just made a little of it because we're gonna come back and sprinkle that around. I'm gonna put a little bit of brown on his face here. No, I just had a thought when we were painting birds, we sometimes, well, even with the bees, we sometimes wondered, can you tell the gender? And I never thought about that with squirrels, or maybe the female's a little smaller. I, I don't know. But they're coloring, their coloring may be the same. I, I, I know that we have a couple of squirrels running around the house that are really pretty small, and I've just been assuming they're still kind of juveniles. They're, they don't look full grown yet, but you know, it's fall now. And if they were born in the spring, surely they'd be close to full grown. Maybe I'm putting too much thought into them. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't I have enough to think about on my porch. I know, but they're, uh, they're fun. They're silly. We have these well, just plants on our patio that produce 
the plants are called skip laurels. Oh, yes. And they produce a berry that looks initially like a small um, coffee bean, mm -hmm. but then it turns a brilliant red. Oh. And so all of a sudden I was wondering why these, these plants were, the Attracting. branches were bent over. Oh. And it's because our little squirrels are going up there and taking all the little branches oh. off. They're busy. Or eating, little, the, eating the berries rather. Not busy, the busy little critters. Yep, they're having a good time with it. I put in a little light brown for his paws. I guess you'd call them squirrel paws. We make up our own names for animal anatomy and bird and bee anatomy in here. I did pick up a little of the black color that I made, black and brown. I mean, sorry, black and blue make brown. Sorry, blue and brown make black. And I'm just putting it on the corner of my brush and just tapping in a little eye. We're gonna come back in the final step and really, you know, work on the eye and the nose and and mouth and all that. So I'm gonna finish this step uh, with some of that blue, that pretty cerulean blue going in on that white belly. And we're gonna come back and finish up kind of this fluffy whiteness around the tail. All the pretty details are going to be in step four. That's the step where we call finishing up. And um, and that's when we'll, what I say, kind of tweak it or work the magic or lay in the eye candy. We have all kinds of little nicknames for this final step. Because in this method, I want people, especially my students in the studio as well, or, or also to keep on moving, get the paint down, uh, you know, get it 80, 90% down, and then we come back in the last step and kind of work on like really beautiful brushwork, making sure everything looks, you know, um, painterly with soft, fluffy brush strokes. And in this method, we don't want it to look so much like a drawing. We really concentrate on making it look more like a painting. And I, I like to say that's kind of where I differ from some of the other teachers in town because a lot of us in Louisville had one teacher, oh, the only really art teacher we had for many, many years and she came from the background of illustration and there was a lot of drawing and then coloring it in and i want to try to get as far away from that effect that's why we want i want to look much more impressionist and creative and i love to see i mean uh, the work that my students put out is just amazing and millicent has done some amazing why don't we pick a few of your favorites and we'll insert them at the end of the video. Um, I mean, I can think of a couple that would be great to see. Probably Woody. Ones. Woody was a good one. And since we're painting a squirrel and Woody was in kind of in the woods, yes, that would Woody be appropriate. Woods, yes, and I also um, like painting bears. Oh my gosh, your bear painting. Oh I my gosh. I love painting bears. Yeah. Um, I think I'm about ready to pause the video here. We'll stop and have a chat. Oh, I'm just gonna put a little bit under his chin. He looks a little, left a big white spot there. And we'll stop and talk a little here and then pick up at step four and finish up. Okay, that was a nice little break we took. Sometimes you have to take a break. Create, being creative and painting, it's really hard work. I know on vacation, you know, um, David will say, oh, are you gonna bring your paint? It's so, you know, I know it's so relaxing. And I'm like, you know, it's relaxing when you do get in the zone, but you've got to do so much preliminary thinking and setting up and planning. And sometimes it's not always the most relaxing unless truly you, um, get in a studio situation or have a studio at home where you're set up and you can just kind of float into your space. Um, but I think with these water water soluble oils, it certainly makes it a lot mm -hmm. easier. And I do take them on vacation because yeah. it's water cleanup and, so, yeah. and if you're flying, you don't have to worry about turpentine. Or... Right. All right, we're gonna put on those final finishing touches. So as you can see here, this little fellow looks nothing like this, but we're going to in about 
a few easy steps, maybe probably 10 minutes or so, and we'll have it looking really good. So I'm going to, I wet my brush, I cleaned it, make sure I had the color off from the last step. I'm going to pick up the white. And I'm going to start just kind of flicking it out like this. And as I do that, I'm starting in the gray and I'm very lightly kind of lifting and flying that brush across um, over that green. And each time I'm doing that, I'm picking up green. So I'm, you'll see me come over here and just wipe it off. Pick up the white, pull your little fluffy fur out, all that green paint that I just picked up, wipe it off and kind of repeat. Don't worry about it being uneven. Right now we're gonna come back and we will work on that. Right now I'm just gonna kind of give it that fluffy fur. And this is kind of the secret of doing fur. This is the way I do it on all animals. That little flicking motion, just very lightly. If I didn't mention it once or twice, I'm gonna mention it again and again, very lightly with the brush. And I really need to wipe off after every stroke because... Yeah, I just got green. lazy and did not do that. I didn't, so I, I twice. And the reason I'm saying it is I got green in his tail yeah. twice because I got lazy too. I and you know what? Same thing. I find so much when I'm painting, there are 10 different ways I get lazy. Not squeezing out more paint, which by the way, I'm going to do right now. Um, not stopping to get another paper towel. Just little things that you need to do to make painting, make it easier. And you're just thinking, oh, I'll just keep using this paper towel forever. And then you realize you're just, instead of wiping off paint, you're picking up paint. Now it's looking kind of polka dotty because I haven't blended it in, you know, it's looking kind of irregular. But I'm going to go to that, that stage now where I begin to blend in. And by that, I mean, I'm probably gonna pick up maybe almost out of every color over here. Just getting a little something like a gray on the end of my brush and I'm gonna kind of just feather in mm -hmm. the little sharp edges of those brush strokes. And I just spread some more green up I, in there. <laughs> I, just, I just did the same thing. I'm like, oh, I can get another one. Nope, yeah, nope. There we go. And, and, and I was pulling outward on those white fluffy strokes, but you can pull inward a little bit now. It's just a matter of mem just as lightly as you can touch that little brush down. Now, I, again, I can't tell you how many projects when I am doing these live with you all, I just don't get the face even close to right. So we're going to work on that. Um, before we do, I'm going to pick up, I'm going to make a little more gray, which is just dark brown and dark blue with white, a little bit of white. That made a nice kind of medium gray and I'm going to go back, he needs a little shadow color down at the bottom of his belly for him to look round. You know, we always need that highlight at the top, a little shadow at the bottom. That's how we round out the dimensions. I'm gonna add a little more dark gray here. And I definitely have some dark gray, almost like a little, I'm putting it on the chisel end of the brush and just tapping it around the edge of his face so we can kind of see maybe it around his little muzzle. A little mouth there, cute, looking cuter. My squirrel's starting to look like our, your neighbor Diane's squirrel. Oh, gaining a few ounces. He's gotten a few ounces here. Well, this time of year, I guess that's what they're supposed to be doing. Um, okay. 
I'm still nowhere near on this face. So I'm going to, and for the eye, since it's pretty black, it's, since the eye is pretty black, you can go ahead and use that black out of your tube. See, I said that. You can use the black in your tube if you want to make that eye really black. And I'm just using the corner of my brush. That's why I like these sharp cornered brushes. You can just use the corner to tap, tap with the corner and make nose and Can we make a black if we want to? Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Cause you know what? Maybe I was just too lazy to get up and walk across the room and get the black paint. Well, I'm beginning to get somewhere with him. I'm gonna put some shadow down under his feet. And a little shadow under his arm, right here under his shoulder. I mean, under his, uh, what do you call that? Where's his arm? I guess I need more gray down the middle of his face. And I have an ear that I need to totally move over. It's in the wrong place. So I'm gonna put that ear back in. It should be over here to the right a little bit. Okay, it's starting to look better. He still looks a little bit cartoonish, but there's nothing to say that squirrels don't look cartoonish. Maybe when I get a little highlight on his nose. So that's what this step is for. Come back, I'm gonna say, maybe I need a little more fluff in that tummy. Maybe a little more highlight down in there. I think it helps also, I'm gonna make some more of that black, just these two colors. I'm actually just mixing it with the end of my brush. And just using the corner of that brush, draw, you know, the little oval for his eye. There we go, looking much better. And, um, his little nose in here. And the biggest thing when you're painting an animal or a person is um, always going to be the sparkle in the eye. When you get that little sparkle in the eye, they come to life. So I'm gonna take, try to clean my brush off pretty well. I'm gonna take that nice kind of chisel end of the brush and you get like a little sharp corner there. Dip that corner into the white and just drop that little highlight, glossy light. Oops, maybe I didn't get enough paint. Put that little glossy highlight right in there and he comes to life. Oh, I have the nose much bigger on this fella. Maybe I'll carve that down a little bit. Maybe make his mouth a little smaller. A little chin. How's that coming over there? It's coming along nicely. Oh, good. We'll have a what I call the big reveal here in a minute. And I want all of you all to always be proud of your work. I mean, every time you get out to paint may not be the most successful day, but you tried and you practiced 
Think of these lessons as practice. Um, one of the things I'm gonna start doing in the boxes is um, sending a monthly challenge in the box. And it might say, paint two pieces of fruit sitting together or something like that. And then we can all kind of throw that online and see what we came up with and what everybody's idea and version was of that. But basically the idea there is to get you to practice, just practice, practice, practice. And you know, sometimes they come out really well and sometimes they don't. And you have to just keep trying. I, rem I can almost remember the early the days when, uh, in my home studio, when Millicent started coming in to paint with me. And I know she was a little afraid because I've seen that look on hundreds of people as they come in my studio. Yes, I was. <laughs> <clears throat> and there's some days that I still feel the same way. There's some days where I wonder what I'm doing. But never quite as bad as those days when I might have been... Uh, a long time ago when I had time to play tennis and golf and I have a bad day and you just get so mad at yourself. I don't get mad at myself in here. I'm much kinder to myself in the studio. It's such a peaceful, pleasant place to be. There's no re reason to bring in that kind of energy, which is pretty much the way it is with all of our students painting in here. It's good energy. Artists are happy people to be around very positive here mm -hmm. and I feel like our Facebook page is that way too let's continue well they're going to continue to like keep posting and that'd be a fun place for us to take a look at the monthly challenge actually maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll have a giveaway with the monthly challenge some kind of reason to get you guys inspired to do it A free trip to Louisville, Kentucky. <laughs> Everybody's like, mm -hmm. only if it's Derby Week, then they'd say, yeah, for the Kentucky Derby, sure. I know we, I uh, have had students painting in Scotland and Ireland and British Vancouver and Guam and Singapore. So sometimes it's fun to just kind of tell you all some stories about Kentucky or the part of the United States that we live in. Now, this last little stage, he has come a long way, my little fella. He has come a long way. I think I'm about to say let's sign it and wrap up. Uh, I love that blue sky. Um, highlight that I had talked about. I added a little gray into it. And I put another one of those in here. I think it's looking pretty good. I see here that his little elbow kind of came out further than the belly and that's a nice touch. So I'm gonna pull that out a little. And I think I'm ready to sign it. Now, because these paintings are small, I did actually sign it all the way here with um, my, I usually sometimes, usually sometimes, I usually or sometimes put just my initials down, but I see that I did K gray here. So I'm taking the chisel end of that brush, just getting it, getting the, almost like it's ink. And I'm just gonna put down a K. Oh, I don't have the prettiest signature at all. I've got some students that just, it's like their signature is a work of art. I've never had that talent with handwriting in any way, shape, or form. And then I just take in the corner to make a little G, R, A, Y. I may touch that up a little bit after we finish here today. Hopefully somebody you know is going to enjoy this little squirrel living on a wall or a shelf near you or with them. All right. We'll meet you back here in the foyer. Okay, Melissa. I'm glad, so I, I'm glad I got you in here. Um, like I said, Melissa came in, started painting with me in my home studio above my garage, which is very pretty. Beautiful, Beautiful studio. Yeah. With a fireplace uh, and a big picture window. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. um, we didn't even call it a picture window. It was a whole wall of windows, yes. but it was beautiful. So she's been on this journey with me. We, we had to sell the house and I ended up um, leasing this lovely studio where I am now, which has been eight years. So you've been with me, yeah, like you said, yeah. at least nine years on yeah. this journey. And we've been through a lot of fun times. She, yeah. she uh, Millicent did join us on the trip to Provence when I took the painting group, one of my painting groups, mm -hmm. and we went to Paris first. And boy, did we so, have fun. We had I so much fun. We still laugh about that yes. trip. Um, but anyway, I'm, so I'm happy to have her here as one of my guest artists, and we're gonna show you her squirrel and mine. This was from today. And she said that her squirrel's been really getting ready for winter. Yes. <laughs> mine was a little, mine must have been visiting your neighbors. Yes, Skippy. yes, and eating the peanuts. And eating the Diane's, peanuts, yes. And dying is that yes. porch, so. But she did a great job. It was and this is very different for my students because we work a little more um, long-term methodically on bigger projects in the studio. Sometimes we do little ones, mm -hmm. but uh, quite often, like Terry came in today and did a little one, kind of almost pop cranked the whole thing yes. up. But um, we don't often just start with a drawing from scratch and, and finish it in a couple of hours. So it's a little different for my students, but I like to, for them to see how you all are doing it at home and, and making sure that it's not too much of a challenge. It's something that we can all do and have fun. And um, we'll have you back here for another uh, subject that's near back. and dear to your heart. I would love to come back sometime. And we're gonna put some of Melissa's pictures in here at the end of the video so you can see some of the fabulous, uh, like she said, the bears and some things that mm -hmm. she's painted. Um, and uh, just has learned so much and become quite a lovely artist. And uh, I'm going to have uh, hope that you all will too and have that um, monthly challenge in there and please post on Facebook and we will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.